on behalf of the entire Ink Feathers publishing team, I welcome you to the book launch event of yesterday's Train to Nowhere, recently authored by Dr. Colonel Krishna Rao. To begin with, I would like to thank all our guests who have uh, taken the time and uh, sh to share the moment with us. To begin with, I would like to uh, introduce our chief guest for the for the event, uh, Honorary Brigadier Dr. Arvin Lal. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to uh, give you a brief description of him. Uh, Brigadier Dr. Arvind Lal is a pioneer uh, in bringing laboratory services in India at par with the Western world. He is an alumnus of the Armed Forces Medical College, as I believe all of us uh, present here are. In 1977, uh, Brigadier Lal took charge of the Dr. Uh, Pal Path Labs, the medical diagnostics laboratory, founded in 1949 by his late father. Under his expert guidance and leadership, Dr. Lal Path Labs has become one of the most reputed lab laboratories in Asia, having to its credit a record of 36 labs accredited from NABL. Plus, he also brought to India international accreditation from the College of American Pathologists, that's CAP USA. So thank you so much, sir, for having us. We have a really beautiful list of very inspiring personalities who have uh, chosen to be with us. So please welcome uh, Lieutenant General UK Sharma, most commonly referred to as Yukes in the book, as you will all read. The favorite character. Yes, the favorite character. He is former, former commandant Army Hospital RNR New Delhi, and he is also a PG teacher and examiner for MD, DNB, that's General Medicine, and DM and DNB, that's Nephro, former vice president of Indian Society of Nephrology. Next, we also have Major General Jaktar Singh. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> He's an ex-additional Director General Armed Forces uh, Medical, uh, Medical Services Office at the DGA FMS, Ministry of Defense, New Delhi. Again, it's uh, such an honor to have you, sir. Then we have Dr. Anil Mishra with us. The, he is a senior faculty in the anesthesiology at Maulana Azad Medical <laughs> College at LNJP. And Mrs. Mishra, thank you so much, ma'am. And last but not the least, we have Air Vice Marshal Ashutosh Sharma, who's currently serving in the Armed Forces. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for the event. So next thing is, as all of us know, Dr. Colonel has written a wonderful, wonderful book. And uh, it's not new to his friends and his uh, peers, but uh, I would still like to take the time to introduce him to people who are meeting him for the first time. So he uh, served as a pediatric oncologist in the Army, and he's also a hematologist. So after he uh, retired from the Army, uh, he started uh, treating people in all sorts of medical institutions, plus uh, giving them a lot of uh, knowledge uh, through his lectures and seminars and webinars. So uh, that is about him, but you'll obviously know a lot more. But to talk about his book, it is one of my favorite books, if I'm talking about them. I call it the perfect cozy read because now it's winter and if I even pick it up and read any story from it, it gives me a warmth, a cozy comfort that I rarely find uh, anywhere else. So uh, you would love to read each and every piece that he has penned down. It's his experiences from the army. Uh, it's full of wit, it's full of humor, it's full of smiles and laughter. It's basically inspired from his experiences that he faced as a doctor and the kind of challenges that people in the army have to deal with, what kind of ups and downs there were, and his friendship, as you can all see, uh, this is honestly something that uh, I have never experienced in life. Without further ado, I would uh, like to invite Dr. Colonel Rao and to, to felicitate our chief guest, uh, Brigadier Dr. Arvin Lal. Before we begin with the interview and we get into the book and the stories, we would like uh, uh, Dr. Arvind Lal to please join us on stage, along with the founders as well, to reveal the book and open a pack of the books that we have, Yesterday's Train to Nowhere, and inaugurate this function that we have today. Please, please join us. Please, uh, Dr. Kandal, yes, yes, please come in. Can we have a big round of applause? Please, please. Yes, you can. And that's the book. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have a pack of books there, which is placed right there. Please take your time and <laughs> this is the best part of getting gifts, isn't it? The wrapping. <laughs> So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for uh, coming here today. And for me, it was more out of love and affection I can't express to you that I am the, uh, you know, you've heard in Sanskrit, Tumeva, Mata, Pita, Tumeva. So, I, I was something like that to these boys and girls. But let me first talk about the book. Then we'll tell you what they used to do in college. So, uh, I think uh, Krishna and uh, Umesh, Chris and Yukes, as you call them, have proved beyond doubt that they are excellent doctors. They are also um, excellent uh, sportsmen. I, I, I have read about his bowling prowess, a fast bowler, and thank God he, where he was trying to hit the gentleman, he did not hit him there. <laughs> But he, but, but he still got him on the ground and the rest, of course, I think you should read the book. And, uh, but above all, they are both great human beings and that, is, that comes out very clearly in the book. Uh, Chris has written a very engrossing, a very um, lucid account of what army life for two young doctors can be. It is witty as much as it could be. And it's a full-blooded account of their so-called Hathiwadi, Hathiwadi posting. And uh, I think Chris will be acknowledged as a great writer henceforth. So I can safely say that he is in the wrong profession. <laughs> Chris, there's still time. So uh, going slightly more deeper into the book, the book is engrossing. And... Uh, it is, it is something which is what you call in you know, colloquial English language as unputable. So I think this is, this is the, uh, the finer parts. There is no mystery in the book. It is all, you know, the, the world as the two young doctors would have seen what, what army can be and army can be. There are two sides of the army and I'm, I'm sure... All of you know that. One is the, the great, you know, the ceremonial part. And yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir. And yes, ma'am, how are you, ma'am? How are the kids, etc. And the other part is that, Achha, tum janta, I'll fix you. you know? <laughs> so, so they have seen all that. Though the good part comes out in the, in the book very, very aptly. And I again congratulate you for that. Chris is catching the English work in um, the so-called local colloquial Punjabi Hindi pronunciation, especially from Sikh soldiers, is really commendable. And even a hard-boiled egg like me, literally, was momentarily, <laughs> I was momentarily foxed by the Sikh soldier, you know, pronouncing the word J-O-O-N-T, N-T, Junt, which which actually meant unit. <laughs> and, and here's a Mangalorean guy who has picked up, you know, uh, th these are Sardar boys. Of course, we, we live in the north and we are used to hearing, you know, these guys. So things like that, which he has written. And for this quality exhibited by Chris of mastering what we call the art of writing Roman, Hindi, Punjabi. <laughs> and he deserves the AFMC Pulitzer Prize for Literature. Give, 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 him, give him a big hand. He really deserves it. So long live AFMC and I would like to reiterate that the Indian Armed Forces are the luckiest armed forces in the world because they have such nice AFMC trained doctors looking after them. No, no other force in the world has that. And for those of you... Uh, who are new to this or hearing about this college, 
It is the second best medical college in India. It has been voted like that. The first one being All India Institute. But we are catching up. And uh, yeah, that's a very serious topic, so I won't <laughs> go into that. And uh, our college is one of the 50 best medical colleges in the world. 50? So within the, within the first, uh, within the first say 50, so you can imagine what a great college it is. And all colleges are good, but AFMC has got a plus X factor. Now, <laughs> triple X. <laughs> so, so I'd like to, uh, you know, talk about, I would like to talk about another character who comes out, you know, with, you know, everything, full glory, and that is Yuks Umesh. And first of all, I, <coughs> I congratulate the, the DGMS Army's, you know, section or department of posting for having posted you two characters there together. <laughs> Inadvertently, I don't think they've done a better posting of any two guys together at any times in their lives. And, and, and yeah, and, and there, there is a serious, uh, there was a serious uh, reason you know why the army posted these two young doctors together and that is the, the reason was the first doctor was posted there alone he committed suicide <laughs> so these two guys could have killed each other but i can tell you they would not have committed suicide that's for sure anyway so that that's very very good and uh, especially yuks uh, coining the word medicopathicus hadiwadi ensis for humans discovered in Hadiwadi, I deserve this very special hand and would put probably, <laughs> put probably uh, Charles Darwin's you know, theory to shame. <laughs> One second. So if, if Charles Darwin was present here, <coughs> I would have asked him, Charles, so, so on a serious note, Yukes is a great guy. I've seldom met such an unassuming, highly qualified three-star general. Cheers to that. But in true AFMC spirit, I would like to ask him, why did you give up drinking? Anyway, so that, that, that yeah, yeah, no, but I, okay. So, going further into the book, Chris's and Duke's diagnosing some fairly difficult cases for rookie doctors deserve special mention, like the Mallory Weiss syndrome, the, the sickle cell, you know, disease. I think the palpation of the tip of the spleen was a giveaway, but that is, we're not holding a medical, you know, co you know <laughs> quiz contest there. But the drunken Havaldar, uh, the WPW kind of a, that heart block syndrome which you diagnosed, the drunken Havaldar, yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah, whatever. And and the uh, the drunken Havaldar who turned out to be hypoglycemic and their special, you know, forensic kind of capabilities, what we used to call in college, Inspector Eagle kind of, you know, capabilities, both CBI, FBI, CIA, everything put into one. And, um, you know, they're solving uh, cases which are actually also non-medical, and I'll tell you which ones. The solving of the five-ton driver, Dhanush case, you know, you <laughs> obviously you would remember. And the old and the of the ill-fated uh, uh, rendezvous of the errant dentist and the nursing officer. <laughs> so though though I have seen I have seen you know uh, doctors like that uh, in my life who would probably what they call show two fingers to the establishment at all times. So I think he was that character comes out very his uh, you know yeah so he a very colorful character. And uh, I remember the, the nursing officers in the army, Kabi Garbar say, Galti se unko ke nurse bula de. They used to take offense. How can you call me a nurse when I'm a nursing officer? 
so uh, that uh, the dentist of course was you know literally harami guy and we've met lot of such ca characters in afmc and of course now the the brigadier's daughter who got married to that horrible merchant navy guy you know and um, she had a, a light for our man chris and i wonder if he ever introduced aarti to her later on did you much before his time acha <laughs> 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 now you can i think and of course finally they are they are meeting uh, field marshal manik shaw in uti uh, you know actually um, uh, is is i think a very nice kind of a ending of of this book because people have you know they they are overawed by him and and talking about field marshal manik shaw uh, you know he is from gurkhas and uh, and so was you know the cds who died two days back and he the 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 erstwhile unit of gorkhas where field marshal manik shaw started his life as a captain was known as frontier force and it was at the india pakistan border at that time now pakistan afghanistan border and the place was known as wana w a n a south waziristan and guess who's who was his rmo my dad young oh. young lieutenant <laughs> yeah so lieutenant S K Lal was RMO to Frontier Force, where Manik Shaw was a young captain. So, um, morning, uh, Colonel Kuldeep. I'm I'm the I'm the senior and the warden. You know, in in India, you have a a divisional officer, you have a battalion officer, and you have somebody who's doing something to them. Well, that was me to them. You know. <laughs> so, so now I'm talking about. Uh, you know about when a the o batch was to come and this is before they joined so tehelka inke aane se pehle ho gaya tha and that was i was you know woken up not woken up i was uh, i just finished my breakfast in the in the hostel and i was uh, told that commandant saab aap se baat karna chahte hain so i reached you know there was only one you know telephone which was lying in that uh, warden's office on the ground floor and i was told by commandant that please report to my office at 8 or 8:30 whatever time you know the college started i said fine sir and then i that you know actually unnerved me because commandant was not supposed to be speaking to a you know the lowest kind of a <laughs> rank the uh, uh, the assistant warden of the boys hostel and i said well last night the police never contacted me nobody broke up any window panes so nobody got drunk nobody had an accident so i i picked up you know dead bodies of my my students by the way and um, uh, everything was fine even munnu barat slept peacefully we'll come talk to munnu barat later so why does the commandant afmc wants to meet dr lal the warden of the boys hostel and i reached there and i he had just been inside the uh, in his office for about a minute he just arrived a minute earlier and he was still wearing his beret and at that time the the post of the the commandant used to be of a major general now of course it's been upgraded to lieutenant general and when i entered he just looks at me and he takes off his beret and he puts it in my hand and he tells me in punjabi he says arvind hon meri izzat tere haath ch aayegi now for a commandant you know ye to paasa bilkul hi palat gaya main kya soch ke aaya tha and what happened i just said tell me what's happened and he was one major general dc sachdeva he was an orthopedic surgeon and he had commanded the artificial limb center earlier and uh, so he showed me a, a signal which he had received from the army headquarters so the signal said something like you know this that uh, two cases of ragging in in india were reported they were all six termers and they were ragged in reverse as they say by first termer and second termers this is the tradition of nda the uh, you know and 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 sometimes that ragging gets out of hand they put locks they put ammunition boots they put god knows what all in kit bags and they hammer their seniors ke the khundak puri nikal lete hain but sometimes it gets out of hand and it got out of hand that these two boys cadets were hospitalized in southern command hospital in fact i had gone and seen them also and one of them died and the other chap who survived 
turned out to be the nephew of the serving army chief, General Rana's nephew. And he was also, you know, something, had, I forget now what was wrong with him, but he survived. And he tells me this conversation going on in Punjabi, which all of you, I think, understand. He says, Dek, don't think see, you're not in the army, you'll survive. ragging will zero granny. No ragging in, in, in AMC. <coughs> Excuse me. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to like you to meet the O batch. It's the only batch in the history of AFMC which has never been ragged. Thanks to Dr. Arvind Lal. In the first term, first term, uh, no, in the, again, in the, in the first term, when you all joined, no, nobody got that kind of security. In your first days, nobody touched you. This much I can show you. Yeah. So anyway, so, so that also entailed, you know, quite, quite a few things which uh, uh, entailed like, you know, picking up students for the first time from Pune railway station. Okay. So now that had never happened before, being given VIP treatment except, you know, rolling out the red carpet. Everything else was done for these guys. <coughs> so anyway, and guess who comes out of the railway train and sits in the bus with me is Swamiya Swaminathan. And she looked, you know, slightly younger and she was holding a huge guitar which was almost twice her size. And I also, you know, they like the, there are other, uh, other kind of uh, things which I remember. And Marju, Manju Kardam also got down and she was, and I think I remember a small glint in Manju Kardam's father's eyes when he saw Swamiya's mother. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> then of course there was a batchmate of mine who was still languishing in, in AFMC at that time. And his name was Charlie Vishwanathan. Uh, Charlie was so bad that I can't even describe how bad a, ma a man can be in AFMC. He had stopped going to college. He had failed in pharmacology for the eighth time. Eight times. And here I come as his warden. And I said, Charlie, what's happening? And Charlie was, you know, always inside his absolutely tund and lying in his room. And I said, hey, now you better come up. So I had to ask him, I said, why would you like to actually pass out or not? He said, of course I'd like to pass out. So I walked up to Professor Gupta and I literally asked him, I said, Professor Saab, Charlie ko pass karne ke liye aap kya loge? And Professor Gupta in a typical fashion, he says, Arvind, can you ask him to attend just one tutorial of mine? I go, only one, sir, not two. Yeah, <laughs> so, so only one. Charlie was made to get up that day. He was made to literally, you know, how nursing officers scrub a patient. He had to be scrubbed hard. He had to be shaved. And all those batch, you know, kind of things. Ultimately, Charlie's, you know, face was looking nice. And I produced him in front of Professor Gupta. I said, here's your boy and one tutorial, sir. And he passed. <laughs> <laughs> and now Charlie had, you know, was... Uh, he got his, the spring back into his feet. And I said, now you please accompany me. There are beautiful girls in Obatch. <laughs> and uh, I'll introduce you to them. And we'll do a fashion show. And uh, we did a fashion show, which was a hit of the town. It was liked so much, uh, Tripad is sitting here, so much so th that the army commander, you know, summoned me. And he said, now you have a fashion show for me. I said, why? So there was, you know, like chamcha of his one plastic surgeon in command hospital by the name of, I think, Colonel Sinha, uh, plastic surgeon. And he was after me. I said, I'm not obligated. I can, I'm, not, I'm serving in AFMC for AFMC commandant, not for the GOC in Southern Command. Anyway, getting a long story short, there was no point in protesting because once you've been had, you've been had. But the students, I, I negotiated very hard. I said, no AFMC student will come. So I was handed over now students from Ferguson and Wadia College, and one of them was the Deepika Padukone's chacha, Prakash Padukone's younger brother. And and they were, anyway, so it, it all went off well, and uh, the GOC then became army chief, naturally they've become. 
and we used to call him Halwai during our days. General uh, O.P. Malhotra. Anyway, rest is history. Then I remember that uh, once I was, um, you know, the fashion show and uh, Meeta Singh had been discovered and uh, this Michael Flores had been discovered for his, you know, speaking, being a good announcer, being an MC. And I saw a chap playing the violin beautifully. So I went up to him and I said, young man, what's your name? And he told me his name. I said, but I've never seen you in, in the hostel. He says, sir, I didn't have a hostel in the hostel. I didn't have admission. I said, if you didn't have admission, then what are you doing on the stage? And he says, these two cousins of mine, Madhu Ahuja and uh, Bindu Ahuja, they brought me, so I came. Chap is a show gulati, of course. No second guesses. So when you have admission nahi hui and I don't didn't want to lose, you know, a, such a fine violinist. So I said, Tukisinu Dasya de Nik Terry admission ni hui. Can the Nisa Kishun Dasya make it the Now these are some things, you know, which is uh, not written in rule books, but it's a very fine print. So AFMC definitely has, you know, a, a kind of a, a, a cut-off date, a guillotine date and time that after this date, anybody who is in that town, who has appeared in the AFMC, and he's even maybe 233rd on the <coughs> waiting list, but he can be inducted if there is, if the, the complement of uh, cadets is not filled by such and such date. I knew this rule. So I said, on such and such date, Ashok, you please report to the warden, uh, as, uh, to me, in, in the hostel, all at night. And I gave him, uh, took it on him first on the hostel strength, gave him a room. I don't know whose room it, it was, must be one of, uh, whatever. And, and then I had lined up, you know, that uh, Mr. Nair, who was the cashier of uh, Dean's, the Talwar Kat Mustache, you know, remember? I said, Mr. Nair, I will bring a boy at 5 to 12. What? And you will give me a receipt. You will take his fees, 300 some rupees, and you'll give me a receipt, and that's all I want. He said, Lal Sahab, aapne bhi itne saalo mein pehli baare poochha, ab aayye. So, poor chap came. He opened the deeds, the cashier <laughs> counter. I took Ishok uh, Gulati on my motorcycle, paid the fees, got him admitted, and now start the fun and games in the morning, which I've got to break this news to the dean that I admitted a guy in AFMC last night. And I went to, the dean was Brigadier Ganguly, whose own son was my batchmate and uh, retired as DGMS heir. And uh, I told Brigadier Ganguly, I said, this boy is such a fine violinist. I had to make a story. And sir, I was looking for a violinist. This time, you know, Brigadier that went, I mean, brought so many guys, etc., etc. but. Something, I mean, we, the guy, one violinist was missing. We found him. And I've admitted him. Oh, hey, Orbin, what did you do? We had promised you promise to someone. I said, if you promised me, then you should tell me. It is time, it is time bound. Time is over. I've admitted him. So he played a guy who only knew he'd been had an Ashok Gulati, you know, was admitted to AFMC, much against the normal kind of rules in the AFMC. So thank you very much. And uh, again, congratulations. It's, a, you, it's a beautifully written book. I'm sure it's going to be read by everybody. So thanks.